Hello and welcome to a high school run with Thul's carry in an all-scout comp. To preface things, uh, this comp is bad. <laughs> do, do not play this comp. Uh, the genesis of this comp is um, I was trying to do a high school path with every character as the carry. And Thul's was um, maybe number 15 or 16 on the list. And to that point, things have been going very well. So uh, a YouTuber by the name of Trash Comps challenged me to do Thul's carry, but in a all scout comp. Uh, so that's the, the genesis of this run. It is absolutely a meme and I, I would not recommend it, but uh, inadvertently it did get me the the highest score <laughs> that I've ever got in the game, just because we had some incredible Jade Scarab luck in Act 2 and 3. So this monstrosity of a comp uh, gave me a 143, 397, just eking out some Jade Scarabs. And uh, at the time it was the number one. I honestly have no idea how to get a 144, 513. I, I think I could maybe get 20 or 30 more points on this patch until the new patch if they change something so this is about as far as I can push a uh, score to my knowledge and <laughs> the comp that did it is uh, the stupid little scary you know you know all scouts and and the reason I'm, I'm laughing because scouts are very good but four of them together are bad because they lack some some fundamental things uh, namely um, inspire uh, you need inspire we need to funnel a lot of inspire and card draw into our carries and our supports. And scouts don't really have any. Um, late game, there's Ballad of Evasion, but that, you don't get that until very late. So we're gonna be resorting to <laughs> to Revealing Flask. We're actually gonna be playing this and, and chaining them across the, the decks of our characters, uh, believe it or not. Uh, the other thing that scouts lack is powerful. So we are gonna be trying to be playing uh, Oat of War on Gustav to put that on um, on Thul's. Let me just bring that up here on screen. We'll be trying to get this on Gustav to place on Thul's. And then Thul's is probably the the, the least bad uh, carry uh, because he has Killer Instinct, so he has some powerful in his own kit, as well as Momentum gives some um, powerful uh, as well. We're going to be playing uh, Black Talons to proc uh, damage on hit, uh, Momentum, Hidden Hand, and uh, wide, wide sleeves. In hindsight, I definitely could have made different choices with perks and, and played a little bit better. I didn't know it was gonna be my number one run, um, but I thought this would be good entertainment. And so yeah, this somehow is the best run I've ever done to date. And I hope you enjoy watching. Uh, to start with, we'll go through the divinations, the decks, the perks, and the pathing. For our divinations, we rolled three basic and the rest were fast. Uh, to start with here, we took this um, Deflect on Gustav and a Ricochet on Thuls. For the second one, we took this Healing Serenade on Andrin, a Deflect on Sylvie and the Poison Daggers on Thuls. And for the third basic divination, we took a Revealing Flask on Sylvie and a Sharpening Knife on Thuls. For our first fast, it was outrageously good. We picked up this Chant of Accuracy on Sylvie, a Corrupted Sprint on Gustav, and a Corrupted Scavenge on Thuls, which is going to be incredible. Here we took a Song of Celerity on Andrin, and the Uproot on Gustav. Next, we took a Trace on Andrin, and a Setup on Thuls. Here we took another trace, this time on Sylvie, and nothing else. The last one we took, and nothing here. I will mention that with hindsight, I probably should have leaned in harder on Mark with Andrin and have perked um, a little bit differently. Uh, of course, hindsight's 2020. I didn't realize that the uh, that this comp would would get me the highest score that I've ever got. Uh, I was kind of memeing a little bit. Um, I should have taken the detection and leaned in harder on Mark and Andrin. We still got through it nonetheless, but uh, 
as we go. You might be thinking, <laughs> why didn't he take the detection? And you're probably right. So uh, let's jump into town so we can go through the, the character setups. All right, we're about to head out to Act 1 Town. So let's cover the uh, character setups and the perks here, starting with Andrew. Our opening hand is always going to be Song of Celerity, which is our speed control. Trace, Trace for deck manipulation and Vigilance, Vigilance for card draw. Uh, we're not really trying to do much with Andrin other than get a Revealing Flask and an Expert Tracker. The beneficiary of Expert Tracker is always going to be Thuls and he's going to draw two. And then the beneficiary of Revealing Flask is almost always going to be Sylvie and she'll be drawing an additional two uh, because of the Inspire Draws 2 perk. For Andrin's perks, um, we actually, he, he's our frontliner and he is going to take a couple of hits. So this is quite unusual for me, but we did uh, have some spare perks with Andrin. We made him uh, just a little bit tanky. Otherwise we went all gold like usual and all shards. And because of the Song of Celerity, uh, we went fast as well. Andrin obviously needs to be very quick himself, for, so full speed. And then in the late game, we're going to be playing Wolfie specifically for the final bosses. So we'll, we'll cover that later, but I perked slow for that and maybe Ballad of Evasion, which is why I poked an Evasion and a buffer here. Uh, we might be playing Ballad of Conquest as well, which is why we went Sharp, a little bit of Bless, and uh, potentially up Roots, and we're definitely going to be playing Wolfie on Andrew in late game. So I did uh, Vulnerable and Additional Charge uh, as well. So going to Sylvie, um, she has two Chant of Accuracies to try and buff Thuls. Uh, we picked up the Deflect, from the divinations and uh, quite similar to Andrin in terms of opening hand we're looking at trace trace vigilance vigilance for deck manipulation and card draw uh, Sylvie has uproot to apply vulnerable reduce the resistances of our enemies and uh, Sylvie as well has revealing flask as we discussed scouts are starved for inspire so uh, this revealing flask uh, the recipient of that is going to be uh, Gustav so that Gustav also draws an additional two. So all of our characters uh, will be have opening hands of, of seven cards. For Sylvie, we uh, picked up this war banner in the shop. Um, so that's, that equipment's going on Sylvie. And we perked accordingly. So we put when all gold, we can uh, get too fast to get her up to 18, which is, is quick enough. Some uh, extra sight um, for resist reduction on, on Pierce. Just in case we're playing um, Detection, we went for a Mark. Uh, we did Buffer and Evasion for the same reason as we went on Andrin, just in case we're playing uh, the Ballad of Evasion. Uh, for physical, uh, we went Sharp for obvious reasons. We're playing Chant of Accuracy. Uh, we actually did Poison Reduces Shadow Resist because on Thor's we're going to be doing some Shadow Damage with this level two. Uh, because we're playing Uproot, we're going uh, Vulnerable for an additional charge. Um, again, because we might be playing Ballad of Conquest, we went for the Bless. And um, of course, we've discussed the Inspire Draws 2 perk um, because of the uh, Revealing Flask. And because of that war by now, we re-perked uh, Sylvie with some uh, additional powerful as well. As far as uh, Gustav is concerned, uh, for his deck, we've of course picked up the, the Sprint, which is a fantastic pickup in the Divinations. And we went with the blue trace just for some self uh, deck manipulation on Gustav. Uh, his his entire game plan is to obviously get Chant of Accuracies off on Thuls and to help out with Ode of War if possible because Powerful is, is quite difficult to find on Scouts as well as uh, cast a few uproots to reduce the resistances of our enemies. For uh, Gustav's perks, we went full Golden Chance as fast as possible up to 18 speed. Uh, same story because of um, Ballad of Evasion on physical, uh, we're playing Uproot, so um, extra vulnerable charge, sharp self-explanatory. Uh, mystical, we we thought we might be playing the Free Lover and the Hydra's Egg combo, which is why I perked a little bit of Vitality Regeneration. We'll for sure be playing Ballad of Conquest, so uh, Bless and obviously the Sharp. Uh, Similarly, Powerful is on Ballad of Conquest, so we perked Powerful and uh, Inspire Draws too, as we've discussed. And then finally for Thuls, we're leaving with a Chant of Accuracy Zero Cost on Self uh, Deflect, which is just a good deck thinner. 
multi shots going to be our AoE in the early game. A couple of zero cost attacks in the form of poison darts and shivs, just free damage. We upgraded the poison daggers that we picked up from Divination. We still have the ricochet from our Divination and the amazing scavenge uh, from our Divination. We also upgraded the setup from our Divinations and the sharpening knife that we picked up from the Divinations too. Uh, we have the scavenge um, to get back our, our multi-shots at AoE. For Thulz's perks, we tried to do as much gold as possible with what we had. We obviously went full shards. Uh, Thulz is very quick, so we only did one speed, which is more than enough. We did stealth, uh, increasing damage by 25% per charge instead of 20. For physical, we're doing a mix of slashing and pierce, so we went full way down this tree. And because of the level 2, we're going to be having sharp increased shadow damage by, by 1 per charge as well. Uh, for elemental, we of course go powerful, increasing damage by 10% as, uh, to do as much damage as possible. And again, because of the lack of Inspire on Scouts, we uh, perked Thulls with Inspire Draws 2 as well. Uh, again, because of the level 2, uh, we perked a little bit of shadow damage. And of course, um, we do uh, bless, increasing damage by 1.5 per charge, but no longer increasing healing. And this is for the late game after Ballad of Conquest. So uh, let's head out. Um, for those of you that watch my videos, you may know that I screenshot everything and restart the seed. So uh, here I saved 817 gold. And that's because I know that a brass amulet is coming up in the caravan, which we're going to put on uh, Gustav. Uh, in terms of the pathing, we rolled a perfect seed, as I mentioned in the intro. And so we're going to head across, uh, we're going to fight Betty. We're going to come up here, there'll be a, an extra node that appears up here. We're going to go through uh, in the hatch, go north, uh, fight the imp, take the boon, kill Belfior, etc. We'll be taking the rift, the rift down um, to Otis, coming up here to the forest border, back down to the river path, then fighting the dryad. We're going to take this uh, little settlement and fight the goblins and the ooze there up to the forest deeps and then uh, Yilme. So it's the, the classic high scoring path. All right, so with that in mind, uh, let's jump into fight one to see if we can get a no TK. We're exclusively digging for revealing flask and expert tracker. We'll place that on Sylvie's deck and then just get rid of it with our, with our trace. So Sylvie's actually going to draw uh, seven cards here. Sylvie's trying to dig for her own revealing flask to then put on, on Gustav. And same story, she's going <laughs> to trace it off the top of his deck too. Gustav on Jaunt of Accuracy Duty. We get the multi-shot back, it costs only one energy. We can scavenge it again for only one energy. Take out the farmer there and uh, ricochet and poison daggers to finish them off. We uh, don't take any of this. We're jumping straight ahead to the corruptor fight that's just before the imp. We have to turn one this fight. There's a corruptor. You can see we've got a lot of curses in our character's decks. This is a tough one. Uh, Andrin still digging for a revealing flask and expert tracker so we can try and uh, turn one this fight. Unfortunately, no revealing flask for Gustav, so he's only going to draw five. But hopefully uh, we can give Thuls just enough damage to take these guys out. This time we'll be scavenging back the ricochet to make it a one cost. 
Hopefully it'll get us there. Oh, that's good damage. One more should be enough. And the poison dart to finish. Awesome. Uproot's great, and we'll take an Ode of War on Gustav to help uh, with powerful uptime. We're skipping through quite a few fights, and uh, here you can see we're at Belfiore. And we're now level 2, so we'll be able to pop off with uh, Black Talons on Thuls. Got our Revealing Flask this time with Sylvie, so we'll be putting that on uh, Gustav and then tracing it off his deck, most likely. Yep, all that can go. Perfect. Gustav turn. A couple of charm of accuracies and an uproot. And now it's time to pop off. Remember that sharp increases shadow damage. So the black talons deal shadow damage on hit. And all of our sharp is buffing that too. And we gun him down on turn one. We'll take that scavenge on Sylvie. Skipping straight to the Yilmer fight. We had to trace ourselves to get Expert Tracker. We don't need the Song of Celerity because we already start fast. Target shooting is going to be great here to reduce uh, resistances further. Unfortunately, we did not hit the um, Revealing Flask on Sylvie. It's a pretty terrible turn as far as uh, Gustav's concerned. But we do get Black Talons, so hopefully we can get the job done anyway. Start off with our sharp application. We're just going to recycle these poison daggers. These now cost zero. You can see doing a ton of damage there. Should be more than enough. Oh wow, that's a uh, corrupted tactical thinking. This could be fantastic. We'll take that adrenaline on Sylvie and the fan of knives on Thuls as well. But this um, this corrupted tactical thinking is going to be great. Be playing the Song of Celerity for even more speed. Fantastic. And let's head over to Act 2. All right, we're about to head out of the Act 2 town. So let's just do a quick uh, recap of the decks and the equipment. Uh, Andrin is pretty much uh, the same duty. Um, tactical thinking is going to get us our Song of Celerity. We're going to be doing Trace, Trace, Vigilance, Vigilance, trying to find Prevailing Flask an expert tracker to start the Inspire chain. We went for this maneuver just in case we need to dodge anything. Andrin is our frontliner. And from an equipment standpoint, we obviously picked up the Forest Crown from the Dryad and uh, a Wolfie as well, just in case we're, we're going into turn two. On Sylvie, we picked up these Gloves of Agility and we bought uh, an Orkili in town. It's just a bit of extra Pierce uh, resist reduction from Sylvie's passive. As far as her deck is concerned, pretty much a similar story. We obviously have the target shooting, the double heart route for fantastic resist reduction, a double scavenge setup for deck manipulation along with uh, trace and trace, our challenge accuracy and our revealing flasks. On uh, Gustav, we have this early Ballad of Conquest. It's going to clog the hand for a little while, uh, but it's going to be quite good late game, I imagine. We have our multiple chart of accuracies. We have the... Uh, Plenty of uproots, which is great. Um, we have this uh, Ode of War 
uh, for powerful redundancy. That being said, I think Fools is always going to start with uh, good powerful uptime. So this is just in case we roll into uh, turn two. For Gus's equipment, uh, we speculated on this dagger just in case we could corrupt it. We uh, went Scarabee because we're going to be testing uh, for Jade Scarabs on turn two. And we still have the Brass Amulet, uh, which we'll probably take throughout the entire game. On Fools, we have this crossbow, just for a little bit of extra damage. Uh, leather gloves for powerful uptime. Block picks to start off with additional sharp. And uh, Rifty as our pet. For Thulsa's deck, we have the Heat Surge that we picked up in the hatch. An Adrenaline, the Black Talons, level two. We picked up a Fan of Knives in the shop. Uh, this hidden weapon, we bought an extra poison dagger. So this hidden weapon is gonna dig out uh, poison daggers, sharpening knives and discount them. We changed a setup to yellow, got a vanish, and took out some multi-shots, a deflect, and some shivs. So with that in mind, uh, let's head out and just go through the par thing. It's the classic high scoring par. We're gonna be going up here, taking as many fights at the arena as possible, coming across, doing knowledge for a dream, jumping into the Black Forge. We're gonna be going north, uh, popping out here, coming across down this bridge, taking the um, Corruptor fight here, and then obviously finishing off with Ignado. All right, our first fight, and it's against Noxious Parasites, which is uh, terrible. Puts Hatch in our decks, which is already messing with us. Here I have an interesting choice. I'm actually gonna ditch Expert Tracker. You'll see why. I can be greedy with setup. Into Scavenge, now we have Expert Tracker and Revealing Flask. Uh, from that play, instead of just taking the uh, the expert tracker straight there. Uh, yeah, Noxious is horrendous. It's It increases their resistances to literally every type of damage that Thulz is doing, uh, and puts a hatch <laughs> in the deck. So this should be a challenge. This is definitely the hardest Corruptor that we'll be facing. We had a similar choice with Sylvie, where we we uh, milled over the uproot and we were rewarded with our own uh, setup and scavenge for a really productive turn there from from Sylvie. Reducing the resistances, they're now at four vulnerable, which is going to be great because their resistances are boosted by Noxious. Uh, looks like Gustav is going to chip in as well with the vulnerable of his own, so now they're at six uh, vulnerable on the enemies, which is great. So uh, hopefully Thuls can get it done. We've got the Black Talons, which is absolutely critical. We're gonna try and pop off with the uh, Fan of Knives here. Yeah, that's, that's not bad. <laughs> the Vanish, nice, nice. Oh, love that as well. That's a Corrupted Uproot. We'll 100% be taking that on our friend Gustav. And we'll skip straight to the Forge boss. Our plan here is to play very aggressively and just lean in on the reactive laser and hope that we don't take too much damage. The speed control doesn't matter, so we're just going to detection instead of some celerity. It's a really nice uh, hand there on on tools. You'll see uh, we picked up an Evanescence. That being said, it's it's not as good as you think, and uh, I think I'm actually going to take it out in uh, in the next act. Found our Revealing Flask 2 for Gustav's card draw. We'll make sure we scavenge before we set up. Perfect. We're level three at this point. So Shrill Tone is uh, 
buffing our sharp on Gustav, such that uh, the chart of accuracies are now giving five to Thuls instead of four. Before we pop off with poison daggers, we'll sharpen ourselves up. And we're through the block. Easy, more than enough damage. We'll take uh, Vanish here on Thuls. And uh, nothing else, I don't think, on any other characters. Really nice uh, pick up here. Uh, less so the Singing Sword. I'll take it, speculate on it, but uh, the Continuum Blade on Thuls is a real upgrade. It's gonna be great. And we'll uh, head up and see you at the Ignado fight. Can you guess, uh, <laughs> can you guess what Andrin's digging for? You got it. Expert Tracker and Revealing Flask. He lives uh, a mundane life, poor Andrin. Just boosting uh, Thuls' base damage there with Sylvie. And tracing the revealing flask away. Phenomenal Gustav turn. Again, for our, for our single target damage, we're looking for poison daggers. We found one. We can put the uh, sharpening knife back on the deck and redraw it with hidden weapon. Give ourselves some sharp, prop the talons, and start chipping away with our free poison daggers. I have a feeling this is going to be more than enough for a turn one kill. Oh my god, that's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, we had another, another poison daggers to spare, just in case. Fantastic rewards. We'll take the Ambidextrous on Thuls, the Ballad of Evasion on Sylvie, and off to Act 3. All right, here we are in Act 3, about to head out. So let's do a quick recap of the decks and the equipment. On Andrew, we have a couple of healing serenades because my sense is that we're going to be going to turn two uh, against the Hydra. So this is just in case we need some heal. Uh, our game plan is unchanged. <laughs> we're trying to revealing flask an expert tracker and speed control our allies up. From an equipment standpoint, uh, we have this bell here on Andrin and still otherwise unchanged. For Sylvie, we uh, of course have the singing sword that we just picked up and um, we have these two ballad of evasions here, our revealing flask for Gustav and similar story to Andrin to be honest. Uh, we're trying to channel of accuracy, uproot, trace, trace, vigilance, very similar. On Gustav, we have a Ballad of Conquest, Corrupted Ballad of Evasions, our chance of accuracies, of course. Um, this purple uh, Corrupted Uproot, which is fantastic. Um, similar story, we, we're playing four scouts, so there's not really much diversity to, to what we're able to do here. For Gustav, we did pick up this uh, Butcher Block in town, so hopefully we can roll some premium meats to uh, increase the buffs on, on Thuls. As far as Thuls is concerned, we uh, picked up an extra ambidextrous and uh, another upgraded fan of knives this time, the, the four cost one, which deals damage equal to your sharp. We're gonna be accumulating a, a ton of sharp on bulls, so I expect this to do a lot of damage. We upgraded a vanish, which is gonna be a, a huge damage multiplier on these fan of knives. Uh, we got another, an, another setup, um, which is just gonna be more card draw. We're doing pretty well on energy with bulls. And pretty much until the final boss, our strategy for AOE clears can be fan of knives, duplicating those with ambidextrous, making them cheaper, and just launching those uh, proccing black talons. 
And of course we get a, a refund because Fan of Knives is a melee attack. So that's the state of play in Act 3 Town. Let's um, head out here and just go over the par thing. We're of course going the high score run, so we're going to come across here. We're going to come across here. We're going to go down to the patrol point, uh, then to the south pier, then to the creeper bridge, down to here where we'll level to four, uh, across to the poisonous zone. We're going to fight this rift. We're going to fail the jump into the spider's lair, so we get an extra crop to fight. We're going to uh, take the character event before the spider queen, fight the spider queen, come out here, take this uh, crop to fight, and then try and crit succeed at the, um, the hydra. This is a corrupt to fight uh, in the spider cave and we're level 4 at this point and just wanted to showcase what the uh, level 4 game plan looks like. Bear in mind all the enemies are immune to vulnerable because of the corruptor. You'll see along the way we took a captivating voice just in case we needed to slow some problematic enemies. We picked it up uh, from a card reward. Prudent choice. The uproot's not really doing much here, reducing shadow resist ever so slightly because of the poison. It's uh, no vulnerable. You can see we have the hidden hand just in case we need it. We did uh, find a barrage, but actually I'm, I'm going to take this out. It's very expensive and doesn't allow us to proc hidden hand, it just sits in our hand too much. So barrage will be coming out. Hey, and there you go. Um, we're going to skip ahead shortly, and I'll see you in the uh, the Hydra fight. Here we took the uh, Adrenaline and the Healing Serenade. Unfortunately, uh, we're not going to be quick enough to... Um, go ahead of the Hydra head that makes itself invulnerable. So uh, this is going to be a, a real challenge. See there, he's now invulnerable. And our Thuls is not the healthiest <laughs> living life on the edge here. And for that reason, we'll be doing melodic rhythm just to recover a little bit of health. We'll also be building a, an Ode of War on Thuls that he dodges uh, any incoming attacks the next round. Love this little interaction between uh, setup and uh, hidden weapon. Discounting our sharpening knife. Again, this barrage, uh, we're going to take it out, even though it's upgraded. 
it's uh, really not what we're trying to do with balls. If it was Sylvie, I would keep the barrage for sure. But uh, as you can see, it's just clogging up our hand more often than not. All right, we get the others out of the way. And we dodge this lightning breath because of the evasion on Thuls. Unfortunately, Andrew is pretty slow. And we don't have stanza, so we can't do any songs. Ode of War, making sure that uh, Thul's at full power for going into turn two. And I, I guess for style points, uh, before we take it out, we'll let Barrage go at least once. <laughs> but we're definitely taking it out. And uh, we'll see you shortly in the Act 4 Town. All right, here we are in Act 4. We're about to head out. And let's just do a quick uh, recap of the, the decks and the equipment. Uh, to start with on Andrin, we have Double Adrenaline, uh, a Corrupted Ballad for Conquest and a normal one, two Healing Serenades and a couple of Revealing Flasks, and otherwise, uh, I think you know the rest of the deck by now. From uh, an equipment standpoint, we picked up the Venom Fang against the Spider Queen, the Eldritch Cloak and the Rift, and uh, everything else I think we've covered. On Sylvie, we picked up this Amulet of Speed, otherwise I think everything we've covered already. We have a, a few Ballad of Evasions, Ballad of Conquest. If you, as you can see in the late game against the Archon, this is more of an insurance plan. Uh, Ballad of Evasion is extremely good against Hans and Archon, where you can just blank uh, entire turns. So this is more just prep uh, for the final bosses. I'm a little bit nervous about the final bosses, which is why we're carrying these uh, these ballads here. Speaking of ballads, we're kind of going song crazy on uh, Gustav. We have a couple of Ballad of Conquest. We bought one of these. Uh, we bought a Ballad of Evasion. We have a Corrupted Ballad of Evasion. We of course have the Encore, a few Healing Serenades. This is probably overkill. <laughs> I don't think this is correct. It's, uh, add a lot of shards to spend. I don't know what else to spend them on. So it's probably not optimal. Uh, from Gustav's equipment standpoint, we picked up Free Lover uh, in the previous act. Otherwise, I think we've covered everything here. And finally, on Thuls, uh, we picked up this Netherblade. Amazing. In the shop, we uh, it's so cheap for how good it is. It's an absolutely crazy item. It benefits from um, Bless. It benefits from Gustav's uh, Shrill Tone. Sharp increases mind damage and the nether blade does mind damage. So the sharp uh, and the powerful and all of that, uh, all those buffs are gonna be buffing nether blade. Incredible item for, for 1600. Uh, we also have a sapphire ring on Thuls and the Titan gauntlets that we picked up from the, from the Hydra. Uh, as far as Thuls' deck is concerned, we of course have our ambidextrous. Uh, we bought this blade flurry because we're gonna need some single target damage against the final two bosses. We're going to be exchanging out these Fan of Knives late game and switching to Blade Flurry for the uh, final bosses. We have this Shadow Step just for another source of stealth. I prefer Vanish because it's free. Um, and I think that's pretty much it as far as uh, Thulls' changes are concerned. So uh, with that in mind, let's uh, head out and just quickly cover the pathing. We're going to come up here to the ruins. We're going to go to the old warehouse across, take a couple of corruptor fights, go to the slime, come up here to the ruins and uh, read some books to get some XP, come across here. So just to speed things along, I'll, I'll see you in the twins fight. The twins are already quite slow, so we can detection instead of song of celerity. That looks great for the for Thuls there. We're level five, 
So uh, Sylvie gets plus two sharp from her right hand side level five, which is great. The chant of accuracy is going to be doing a little bit more work than previously. up to 38 sharp already. We're digging. Digging for Black Talon. Can't quite find it yet, so... We'll launch uh, a couple of these small attacks just to empty out the hand because we're going to have to keep looking for the, the key card Black Talons. And there it is. Decent damage. Get our hidden hand proc. Perfect. Turn one kill. And here we will take the weapon cache on Thuls. It's a nice, uh, nice pickup. All right, nice turn one kill there. And let's see uh, what we pull. Yeah, this is not bad. We'll take the golden laurel on Andrin. Um, I think the war banner will keep that for now. And um, gladiator helmets, I think, is better than Titan gauntlets. So we'll pick that up on Thulls. We're going to head south. We'll take the pink, red, orange. We'll make a few changes to our deck. Take a shop here and see what the final boss is. All right. Here we are at the final bosses. And uh, I decided to... Um, Trim down these decks a little bit. They was getting kind of overboard. So uh, let's go through the, the setup here. Uh, Andrew, we have two Adrenalines. Uh, we have these Ballads of Conquests. Um, we have our Revealing Flask plan, although we actually could could take this out or should have taken this out because we, of course, have the, the Golden Laurel. So this is just not necessary anymore. We have a Healing Serenade just in case we roll into turn two against the final bosses. Uh, Sylvie's a very similar story with a couple of uproots, our target shooting, chant of accuracies, and then uh, Ballad of Evasion, Ballad of Conquest, just in case we roll into turn two. And the same with Gustav. <laughs> we have our, our uproots, our songs, and Ballad of Evasions and Conquest, uh, just in case we, we go into turn two. For Thuls, we picked up a lot of ambidextrous. <laughs> I'm not sure if... Uh, if these are like mul multiplicative or what, how many hands he can use. But uh, we have many because uh, they're fantastic. So I took a bunch of these. Uh, Blade Flurry is going to be our card of choice um, to try and gun down the final bosses. Um, other than that, I think we're in um, fairly good shape with uh, with those. Oh, we of course have the weapons, weapon cache. Uh, from a equipment standpoint, we have the Gladiator Helmet. And um, I think that's it. So with that in mind, uh, let's let's go through to the, the final bosses and see if we can take them out. We don't have the damage output, candidly, on Thulls for a turn one kill. So we're kind of setting ourselves up here for a, a turn two against Handshook. And a, a part of that is playing Chant of Initiative which is going to get us into stanza so we can ballad on uh, turn two. And that chant of initiative also gives Sylvie stanza. So um, both Sylvie and Andrin will be in stanza two next turn. Um, Gustav does give stanza, but it's too late. So we had to use the chant of initiative there from Andrin to make sure they both in stanza two. 
next turn to get off a, a bunch of ballads. Getting fools to ridiculous amounts of sharp before he, before he even goes. We'll put the sharpening knife back so we can redraw it with hidden weapons at a discount and get ourselves up to uh, 50 sharp shortly. Our game plan against these bosses is just going to be proccing um, uh, ambidextrous on Blade Flurry. We're only at five powerful, so we're uh, trying to cast Blade Flurry to proc our, our level three to just give us a little bit of powerful. We just don't have the damage for a turn one kill, so we're just priming for a, for a turn two here. We'll let Andrin eat some damage. We made him a little bit tanky with the perks for this reason. And here's why we play Wolfie. <laughs> we just regain speed control. Uh, this is exactly why we played Wolfie and why we sped up Andrin. Uh, it's perfect. Now they're all slower. Our entire squad's gonna go. We can double Ballad. Get full powerful on Thul straight away. Looks great. Even more ballads. Some resist reduction. And we should be good to go here. I could probably do another ballad. All right, now's where we're planning to play Black Talons from Thuls. very strong. We have 14 bless. Should proc our hidden hand as well. If we need it, that is. <laughs> Revealing flask. Very nice. All right, and on to the Archon. We're gonna try doing the same thing. We're gonna shoot for, a, there's no way we can kill him on turn one. Um, but we're gonna try and shoot for a turn two kill. If uh, we had even less damage, I would play uh, Ballad of Evasions instead of being very aggressive with the conquests. Um, Ballad of Evasion is so good against these two bosses. You can. You can have a scout perk evasion and just pretty much blank all of their attacks. Just remember to give yourself stands of one on turn one and uh, ballad of evasion saves so much health. Here I'm going to be aggressive. I'm going to I'm going to try and shoot for a turn two kill with Thuls instead of uh, messing around too long. With the Golden Laurel, we, we just don't need Inspire anymore, really. He unfortunately uh, makes himself quite tanky against uh, slashing damage, which is unfortunate. But we uh, waited so that we could kill the clone. Clone's really fast, you can see there, 28 speed up in the middle. And so we waited uh, for the Archon to go, such that we could... Um, have Thuls kill the clone, as, as you'll see in a second. Premium meat's very nice there, up to 46, 50 sharp, and we got some extra fury as well, up to 10. Gonna martyrdom Sylvie, 
so that she goes after Andrin. And here again, we're not planning to play Black Talons this turn. We're going to wait till next turn. And our objective this turn is just to get the clone out of the way and then try and get the Archon down on uh, turn two instead. Momentum giving us uh, powerful there. And we'll scavenge back the Blade Flurry so it's cheaper. And then stick it back on top of the deck for next round. Again, look at this Wolfie value. Unbelievable. Putting the arc on just slower than Thals, so we didn't even need to speed Thals up. This is why we play Wolfie, just <laughs> just for this uh, for this fight, and oh my god, is it good. I'm feeling aggressive, we're going to go uh, Conquest instead of Evasion. Evasion would be the safer choice, we would definitely just dodge all of his attacks. Same here on Gustav. We could do Evasion, but no, nah, let's, let's go for it with Ballad of Conquest. See if we can get him down. Ambidextrous uh, Blade Flurry. A couple of times and now Black Talons uh, is going to help us pop off here. Bear in mind he's resistant to slashing damage. <laughs> We're still putting out some serious damage. Alright, we'll get back our Blade Flurry again. We still have more Ambidextrouses. I'm not sure if that's the plural, but I'm going with it. All right, can we do it? Oh, that's good damage. Looks like we're just gonna get there. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah, we did it. Thals was an interesting carry. A lot of cards that I don't typically play with. Super fun. I wouldn't play this comp again, but Thor's carry, really fun. I highly recommend. This is the story of how they saved me. So there we have it, a 143397 with four scouts. Uh, just to reiterate what I said at the start of the video, this is not a good comp, and I'm looking forward to never trying this again. <laughs> Nevertheless, I, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, thank you for watching, take care, and good luck in your Across the Obelisk runs.